Aside from the normal regular animals that we see, there are some specific mysterious animals that you will never believe exist. You will be shocked to find out these animals have been in existence for a long time now. Your mind will be blown after seeing these 20 animals that were only seen once in a lifetime. Number 20. The Bizarre Star-Nosed Mole Among the most bizarre looking creatures on Earth is the Star-Nosed Mole. A close encounter with one would have you wondering if a tiny octopus had been placed into its skull. Amazingly fast for a practically sightless creature, the American species is the fastest feeder on the planet, capable of locating and devouring a meal of insects or worms in under a third of a second. The mole's underground environment is too dark for vision, so it relies on its keen sense of touch to navigate and locate its prey. Foraging moles may cover tens of square feet in a single second by rapidly bouncing a star on the ground. There is a method to the apparent madness. The mole's brain receives input from 100,000 nerve fibers for every touch. You can fit five times as many touch sensors into your nose as there are in your entire hand. New treatments for chronic pain may be possible if the same process is at work in humans, as reported in PLOS-1. Researchers at the University of California, led by Diana Bautista, have found candidate genes that mediate touch and pain by examining the star-nosed mole. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. That takes us to this video's strange topic. What is that thing? Shocking, isn't it? This creature was a result of an accident in a lab that remains anonymous to the public date. I don't know what they were hoping to make, but as for me, I think this is some sort of mix between an elephant and a rat. That's not possible, right? However, this genetic mutation was only able to stay alive for a short period of time. What's your take on this, guys? Until then, let us know what you think about the situation with the hashtag strange topic. That being said, let's move on. Number 19. Thorny Devil the Moloch Horridus, often known as the Thorny Dragon or the Mountain Devil, is a terrifying creature native to the mountains. It's an Australian species of small, up to 8 inches in length, spiky lizard. They inhabit the dry core of the continent where the shrubland and desert predominate. Only Thorny Devils, of which there is only one known species, make up the genus Moloch, and they have a lifespan of 6 to 20 years. Several adaptations and defenses let Thorny Devils thrive in the harsh desert environment. Thorny Devils are classified as obligate myrmecophages, since they will only consume ants as a food source. In a single day, they can eat thousands of tiny black ants. The thorny devil is mostly a sit-and-wait predator that locates feeding sites near ant trails and waits for its prey to walk directly in front of it. They snag the ants with their sticky tongues. The mandibular teeth of these animals are shaped to fit between two of the maxillary teeth, creating a sort of shearing instrument that is well suited to the tough chitinous shells of their prey. Male thorny devils court potential mates by bobbing their heads and waving their legs. After mating, the female digs a 30 centimeter deep chamber into the soil and deposits 3 to 10 eggs there. 3 to 4 months, depending on the temperature, is required for eggs to hatch. Babies and toddlers start eating virtually as soon as they are born. Number 18. Okapi Okapi, or Okapia johnstoni, is a mammal in the family Giraffidae that, like the giraffe, is a cud-chewing hoofed mammal. The Aturi Forest in the Democratic Republic of the Congo uses this species as its flagship, a well-known species that has become a symbol for the protection of a region. The Okapi, a primate native to the Congo Basin's jungles, was a mystery to scientists until 1901 when British explorer Sir Harry Hamilton Johnston submitted the first pieces of the hide to the British Museum. Museum. Although the initial sighting of the animal wasn't reported until 1890, British-American explorer Sir Henry Morton Stanley had already seen it back in 1890. Okapis are native to the rainforest where they can be found among the abundant plant life. The brown and white stripes on its rump give the illusion of sunshine flittering through the trees, allowing it to blend in with its natural environment. 
Fruits, buds, leaves, and twigs are all favorites in its plant-based diet. The okapi, like the giraffe and the cow, has four stomachs to break down fibrous vegetation better. The okapi, like its giraffe relative, has a long neck, black tongue that it uses to eat plants. The daily diet of an okapi can weigh up to 60 pounds, with the riverbed clay providing minerals and salt. Its diet occasionally includes bat guano for added nutrition. Number 16. The Albino Raccoon Raccoons are quite popular in North America. In fact, some of them have become viral sensations after being immortalized in images and films. There is, however, a subspecies of raccoon known as albinos, and they're quite uncommon. This unusual raccoon has been seen in Ontario, which implies that lucky Edobicoke residents may encounter one. However, the animals we see most frequently are probably the ones responsible for the majority of raccoon removal calls. The characteristic black and gray coloring, including the bandage stripe across the eyes is absent in albino raccoons due to a genetic abnormality. This hue reaches all the way down to their toes. Rare as they are, most people have never seen one, although the odds of being struck by lightning are much higher than seeing an albino raccoon. Most people are unaware that such animals even exist, as the probabilities of a raccoon being born with albinism are 1 in 10,000. In fact, everyone is taken aback the first time they see an albino raccoon. Some may even mistake it for an opossum. If you come into a raccoon with white or off-white fur, you should handle it like any other raccoon. Raccoons that are albino are easily recognizable because of their distinctive white fur. Because predators are more likely to see them, this decreases their chances of survival. Number 15. Koi Dog the koi dog is a hybrid canid that resembles wolves. The phrase wolf-like canid is used to characterize the gray wolf and some of its close cousins, such as dogs, coyotes, and several types of jackals. Many wolf-like canids are more frequent than people might think since their species are genetically similar enough to breed with one another easily. The koi dog, for instance, is occasionally mistaken for the very rare koi wolf. The koi wolf, as its name suggests, is a canid hybrid descended from coyotes and gray wolves. Also, the koi wolf is widespread, to the point where there are very few gray wolf populations in North America that do not include at least some coyote. Hush. That's enough. Despite the prevalence of koi wolves, the opposite is true for koi dogs. Although such canid hybrids have been discovered in nature, there are many factors that contribute to the rarity of coyote dog unions in the environment. Such incompatibility can be seen in the fact that the mating seasons of the two species are opposite to one another. On top of that, coyotes and dogs don't get along well in the wild or in captivity. Number 14. Orchid Mantis the Hymenophus coronatus, commonly known as orchid mantises, is native to the tropical woods of Southeast Asia. Females are significantly larger than males, measuring between 2.3 and 2.7 inches, 6 and 7 centimeters in length. For nearly a century after their discovery, many have speculated that these mantises, a striking pink and white coloring and wide flat legs, were evolved to mimic orchid flowers in an effort to trick their prey. They silently swoop down on unsuspecting creatures like moths, butterflies, beetles, and even frogs and scorpions. Cryptic mimicry, also known as cryptic coloring, is a form of evolution that can be deployed on either protective or offensive objectives. The katydid, another insect typical of the leaf-dwelling lifestyle, is also capable of this behavior. In 2014, researchers conducted a comprehensive set of field tests to learn more about the behaviors of adult female orchid mantises. It turns out they don't bother with any disguise. The orchid mantises were the most popular flower among insects. They didn't need to disguise to avoid being found by the insects. They were already heading straight for them. Number 13. Mantis Shrimp the mantis shrimp, sometimes known as a stomatopod, is a type of small aggressive marine crustacean found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans between eastern Africa and Hawaii. They look stunning with their bright colors and patterns, but they are also very dangerous. They may club their prey with the force of a bullet or spike them with their sharp claws. Crustacea are a wide variety of crustaceans including crabs, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, and more, all of which belong to the order Stomatopoda. Mantis shrimp come in a wide variety 
variety of colors, from dark brown to bright green, red, and blue. The well-known species is the peacock mantis shrimp, which is one of the larger and more colorful mantis shrimps. It's also known as the harlequin mantis shrimp, the painted mantis shrimp, and the clown mantis shrimp. U-shaped burrows at the foot of coral reefs are a common habitat for these animals. They might be fully nocturnal or active throughout the day, depending on the species. Mantis shrimp are vicious predators whose diet varies with species. There are many different types of seafood that make up their diet, including fish, crabs, clams, snails, worms, shrimp, and squid. They are so powerful that they can even take down animals many times their size. Number 12. Proboscis Monkey the proboscis monkey, Nasalis larvatus, is a long-tailed primate that lives in Borneo's mangrove forests and along rivers. The male proboscis monkey gets its name from its long, hanging nose. It's reddish-brown on top and pale on the bottom. The female's nose is smaller, and the young noses is turned up. Males are 56 to 72 centimeters, 28 to 20 inches long, and with an average of 20 kilograms, 44 pounds. But females are shorter and weigh only about 10 kilograms. 22 pounds. The body and tail are about the same length. Proboscis monkeys live in groups of about 20, with one male and up to a dozen females. Males live in groups of bachelors. The babies are born one at a time and have blue faces. The gestation period is thought to be five to six months. Proboscis monkeys wade through water standing up, which makes them unique among monkeys because they usually walk on two legs. They spend most of their time in trees and only go to the ground to look for food on rare occasions. They live in groups called harems. Each group has a dominant male, two to seven females, and their children. At night, many different groups sleep near water. Proboscis monkeys are the best swimmers among primates. Mates. They often jump from tree branches and belly flop into the water. They have developed webbed feet and hands to help them outrun crocodiles, which are one of the main predators. Number 11. Garanuk. The Garanuk, or Lytocranius walleri, is a browsing antelope native to the lowland desert thornbush of the Horn of Africa. It's also known as Waller's gazelle. The Garanuk stands at 80 to 105 centimeters, 31 to 41 inches, at the shoulder and has a weight of 28 to 52 kilograms, 62 to 114 pounds. Its coat is two-toned with a buff base and a crimson brown saddle. The insides of its enormous ears and underbelly are also white, as are the patches on its rump and tail, chin, eye, rings, and lips. These S-shaped, strongly annulated horns grow to 32 to 44 centimeters, 13 to 17 inches and in males only. The Garanuk's long legs, neck, Garanuk means giraffe necked in Somali, and pointed nose allow it to nibble carefully on the small leaves of thorny shrubs and trees. It can also reach vegetation that's out of reach for other antelopes by standing on its hind legs. The Garanuk is the only antelope that can stand on its hind legs alone due to its specialized lumbar vertebrae, strong hind legs and wedge-shaped hooves. Number 10. Venezuelan Poodle Moth the Venezuelan poodle moth is an elusive insect with a fluffy appearance. It has only been discovered once. The poodle-like moth was identified in Venezuela in 2009. If poodles, for example, sported massive wings and feathers in place of their erect snout-facing ears, the chitin used to produce the hair-like fluff on its body serves a similar purpose to cellulose in plant cells. Both chitin and cellulose are examples of polysaccharides or sugars known as chitin or cellulose, respectively. They are utilized for stiffness, scales, and in this case, soundproofing fluff to ward off bad cries. Butterflies and moths are members of the odor Lepidoptera. Although there are more than 50 of different species of butterflies in the United Kingdom, they are easily identifiable from images because they are active during the day. Moths, on the other hand, are more difficult to categorize since they are active at night. The first is that they are nocturnal, while scientists are primarily awake during the day. The second is that there are more than twice as many moth species as there are butterfly species with over 160,000 globally and over 2,000 in the United Kingdom alone. Number 9. Narwhal the narwhal is classified as an odontocete or tooth whale because it stands apart from the pack because it lacks a jaw full of teeth. Instead, the upper left jaw of a male narwhal extends to 2-3 to three meters to reveal a single, extremely long straight tooth or tusk. 
Females rarely have tusks, if at all. This tooth develops in a counterclockwise spiral. That's the tusk that makes narwhals famous. European whalers in the Arctic would catch narwhals and bring back tusks with fantastic tales about what kind of creature the tusks belong to, sparking widespread belief in the existence of mythical unicorns in Europe. From a biological perspective, however, the tusk is employed to form dominance hierarchies and ranks of males within narwhal pods. The narwhal's exterior is mottled black and white, yet the animal is white on the inside. Their unique hue is a major inspiration for their moniker. Nar means corpse, an old corpse, while Val means whale in modern Norse. Hence, the name corpse whale alludes to the fact that their skin tone looks like that of a dead sailor. Their scientific name, Monodon, Monoceros, literally translates to one tooth, one horn. Number 8. Thornbug the thornbug, or Umbonia crassicornis, is a common insect of the family Membratacidae and an infrequent pest of an ornamental and fruit trees in southern Florida. The full-grown adult measures about 10 millimeters from head to tail, 0.39 inches. The male's pronotal horn, which is more inclined posteriorly than the female's and typically considerably extended apically, stands out as an example of the species' variability in size, color, and shape. Because it is tall, its nearly perpendicular pronotum resembles a thorn. It deters birds and other predators from trying to eat it. Adults are often green or yellow with reddish lines and brown patterns. When it comes to mating, an older male's 25 to 33 days old ability to sustain flight and physically compete against other males makes a big difference compared to a younger male's. Older guys cannot fly from tree to tree, therefore they must rely on foot travel to find ladies. Though the theories predict that if a woman has the option between a younger and an older guy, she will nearly always choose the older man. This is because older men engage in more sexual advertising and more extensive courtships. Number 7. Bizarre Legless Lizard Has T-Rex Arms an Amphisbanian, like the lizard known as Bipus biporus, is a member of a group of reptiles that lack legs but are unexpectedly not snakes. Their relationship to other legless lizards is closer to that than to snakes. The three Amphisbanian species that do have legs are all members of the genus Bipes, which contains roughly 200 legless species. With their flat, digging forelimbs, they are able to sift through loose soil while burrowing. They move around by using their front limbs and undulating their entire bodies because they spend much of their time underground in shallow root beds eating insects. They only grow to a length of approximately 9 inches and have a very pale pink look. It was exciting for Ruan to uncover two Bipus biporus on their field expedition because the original study from the 1980s says that over 2,000 individuals collected only three were found on the surface. Even though they are not particularly uncommon, the fact that they spend much of their time hidden from view makes them an intriguing and unexpected sight for visitors. However, the Agilote legless lizard is not universally adored by the people of Baja. Number 6. Soft-shelled turtle. The term soft-shell turtle refers to any roughly 30 different species of turtles in the family Trionoshidae. The skeletal architecture of the shell is diminished, and the epidermis lacks the scutes, big scales, that are typical of most turtles. The heads of soft shells are long and streamlined, and their long proboscis-like snouts end in nostrils. It's not uncommon to find them buried in the ground or in waist-deep water. To breathe underwater, they extend their heads and necks to the point where their snouts are barely above the water surface, creating a snorkel effect. It's common knowledge that all soft shells primarily feed on meat. They actively seek out and chase their prey or ambush it and kill it. A flattened body style may seem out of place on an energetic animal, yet it turns out to be great for gliding through water. Because of their powerfully webbed forefeet and rear feet, Soft shells are swift swimmers. Spiny soft shell turtles eat whatever they can fit in their mouths, which includes aquatic invertebrates, crayfish, and even fish. In order to catch prey, they will bury themselves in the mud at the bottom of a lake, leaving only their head exposed. Number 5. Dugong. Marine mammal, dugong, dugon, found in the warm coastal waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, feeds on seagrass, is related to the manatee of the United States. 
Although they are most abundant in Australia, dugongs can be found all the way from Okinawa in the west to northern Australia in the east, all the way around the Indian subcontinent and all the way across the western Pacific. An adult dugong can grow to be 7 and 11 feet long, 2.2 to 3.4 meters, and 230 and 420 kilograms, 460 and 980 pounds, 500 to 925 pounds. The dugong's tail or fluke is severely knotted at the end like that of whales and dolphins. There are no back limbs or a noticeable neck, and the forelimbs are instead rounded flippers without claws. It has a big bristly muzzle. The dense bristles, vibrissae, serve as sensory hairs and aid in locating, sorting, and manipulating food. Sightings of dugongs by early sailors are thought to have inspired the legends of mermaids and sirens. Despite the fact that these animals are typically seen only single or in pairs, nonetheless, it's uncommon to spot herds of 100 to 200 dugongs with a record high of 450 individuals. The maintenance of seagrass meadows at their most nutritious growth stages may be an unanticipated benefit of feeding in herds. On average, dugongs spend one to four minutes underwater, but they have been recorded staying below for eight minutes. Number four, blue dragon, AKA blue sea slug. The mythical blue Glaucus, whose scientific name is Glaucus atlanticus, is a species of small blue sea slug. Its bright blue colors stand out and have brought it a lot of attention in recent years. There are also a number of nicknames for these colors like blue dragon, sea swallow, and blue angel. The species is very good at hiding. The blue Glaucus blends in with the ocean and sky with its bright colors, but it sometimes washes up on beaches and surprises swimmers. It's thought to be both angelic and dangerous, and it's best known for eating poisonous animals and taking their poisons. The blue Glaucus has something called counter shading on its body. Its back is silvery gray and its belly is dark and light blue. Its head is covered with dark blue stripes. This helps protect it from predators above and below as it floats on the water surface. The dark blue color may also help block UV rays that are bad for you. The blue Glaucus also has a flattened, tapered body and six appendages that branch out into 84 finger-like serrata. Serrata are long, thin structures that the blue Glaucus uses to sting when hunting or when it feels threatened. It also has rounded teeth that look like the serrated edge of a knife. Number three, scorpion fly. The term scorpion fly refers to numerous insect species belonging to the order Mechotera that are distinguished by their membranous net-veined wings, which can be translucent, darkly speckled, or banded, and their chewing mouth parts located at the tip of an elongated beak. The caterpillar-like larva develops underground and pupates into an adult. The larvae and adults eat decaying insects and other dead animals, as well as some plant matter. The scorpion fly is not harmful to people and performs a necessary ecological role by eating decaying matter. It gets its name from the way males display their genitalia. A bulbous section at the end of the abdomen, over their backs, mimicking the behavior of scorpions. The dense foliage of woods and ravines is home to scorpion flies. Larvae are mostly carnivorous, although adults also consume a variety of different animals and decaying insects. At the peak of their courtship rituals, males would present females with little pellets of saliva and swiftly vibrate their wings in front of them. These odd insects are distinguished by four pairs of identical long, slender, membranous yellow wings marked with the dark brown marking banding. The antennae protrude from the top of the head like thin threads, and the snout extends downward to house the mouth. A single inch may be added to the length of the body. Men have abdomens like taper off like a scorpion's tail. Number two, blue lobster. A blue lobster's eye-catching coloration could fool you into thinking it's separate species, but in reality it's only a variant of the common American or European lobster. Homerus americanus, more commonly known as the American lobster, often appears dark brown, green, or pale orange. Dark navy blue or purplish coloration characterizes the European lobster, Homerus gamaris. Because of a genetic defect that causes an excess of specific proteins, they have one-of-a-kind coloration. A one in two million chance of encountering such a color variation is how scientists describe its rarity. On the other hand, these numbers are just educated assumptions. Scientists have only been able to pin the blue lobster's distinctive look on a change in skin pigmentation. Their brilliant skin makes them more vulnerable to predators, hence there is suspicion that they act more aggressively than regular, colored lobsters. However, it is common knowledge that lobsters are a combative bunch. Like other crustaceans, such as shrimp and crabs, lobsters have 10 limbs and are connected to both. 
In the same way as common lobsters do, blue lobsters utilize their powerful claws to snag prey such as mollusks, fish, and even some types of sea algae. Though they look dangerous due to their spiky pincers, these insects are actually rather harmless. The poor eyesight of blue lobsters actually enhances their other senses such as smell and taste. Number 1. Liger the liger and the taigon are both zoo-bred hybrids created by mating male and female tigers and lions, respectively. Ligers and taigons are larger than their respective parents and have characteristics of both. Most experts believe that male tigers and ligers are infertile. Women, however, may occasionally be able to reproduce. Portamanteau of lion and tiger includes liger and taigon. Typically, tigers are bigger and heavier than the average member of their species. Some biologists speculate the liger's growth, dysplasia, and an abnormally big frame is caused by the absence of growth-limiting genes. The genes of a male lion are tuned to enhance the growth of his children because his kids may need to compete with those of other males generated by the same lioness. This is because female lions mate with multiple lions throughout their lives, but female lions' genes are designed to counteract or at least reduce the impact of growth, maximizing genes of male lions, ensuring that the species stays within a consistent size range. Contrarily, tigers don't engage in competitive mating as lionesses do, and many biologists argue that tigresses lack the growth-limiting characteristics of their lioness counterparts. Now we have the knowledge of how these animals are and how they live. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and remember to give this video a thumbs up. You can also click the bell icon to watch new videos from us.